Joining me now to talk about global threats is the executive director of Interpol, Stephen Kavanaugh. Mr. Kavanaugh, welcome. Thank you're you very welcome. much. I mean, you deal with hacking, you deal with terrorism, counterterrorism, obviously, human trafficking, fentanyl. Uh, what, what are the most, the biggest global concerns for Interpol? Well, thank you very much indeed for having me on the, the, the show. I, I think having been a, a regional police chief uh, and having national responsibilities, Interpol provides this really unique position. We're seeing crimes, interesting crimes against children, uh, human trafficking, uh, the use of technologies in, has just been highlighted by Director Ray. You know, whether it's romance scams devastating people's lives and bank accounts, uh, whether it's uh, business email compromise, what we can see is that the traditional models of law, law enforcement are struggling to keep up. And there's an important debate to be had about where Interpol sits in helping the victims across the world, but also the investigators. How can Interpol help? I mean, we're seeing what just happened on the Hill with the tech companies and threats of new regulation. Europe has been far ahead of the U.S. They still have immunity from lawsuits. Children are, are dying, the parents of these children who have died because of uh, you know, predators online. Uh, we're in the hearing room today. Um, how can Interpol take what Europe has learned and help the United States catch up? I think the debate that's going on today is an important one. And I think people have tried to polarize it. You know, good and bad, privacy versus child safety. What I have had is the awful, and it's not a privilege, it's devastating understanding about the level of abuse that's taking place. And it's not just children within countries, it's children across the world of every background. And I think the debate that's being had, you know, this is not about law enforcement being right, governments being right, the tech sector. There has got to be some give in all of us because what we cannot tolerate is the level of harm, the devastated lives, the suicides that are taking place at the moment. This debate needs to move forward and Interpol can have a leadership voice and can understand how we share these lessons much more quickly than it's been done in the past. Let's stop blaming each other. Let's focus on the need of children who are being abused every moment of every day and make sure we're doing more together to deal with it. You know, I've covered the intelligence community for years and it strikes me that we deal with counterterrorism, you know, spy agency to spy agency. The FBI has some, you know, overseas role as well after 9-11, they established that. Uh, we deal with drugs from our drug agencies, but you are a law enforcement agency that crosses all of these different areas. Uh, can you provide, you know, sort of unique ways of, you know, breaking through the silos that have so often stopped us from catching the bad guys? I, I think that's one of the most important things Interpol can do. We, we don't have powers of arrests. We don't have guns. What we do have uh, in an age where crime is taking place across borders, criminals will um, use uh, conflict, will use border legislation, will use weak governments to hide from law enforcement. So what Interpol has to do more effectively than ever is look at the data, look at the business model, the way that the money using uh, cryptocurrencies and other models can inform investigators because at the moment they're hiding behind uh, borders, regimes and other locations. Interpol has got a role but it needs to make sure it stays away from the spy agencies. We focus on normal law crimes and keep away from the state sponsored piece because there's enough crime going on devastating lives through fraud through gun running through mafia and organized crime for Interpol to, to support law enforcement across the world what about cyber the kind of thing director Ray was warning about today with the threat from China from Russia Iran uh, other bad actors you know state sponsored cyber hacking well what we see is uh, in law enforcement, you have to see state-sponsored, state-ambivalent, but then you just see criminal activity. And now on the dark web, you can buy ransomware as a business model. You can have a subscription. It's become so easy. And the proliferation of criminal opportunities on the dark web uh, through technologies is only going to grow. The metaverse, we've already seen sexual attacks taking place. We've got quantum technology emerging, generative AI. You know, the use of technology across the board by criminals is changing at a pace that we need to understand globally. And again, using the experience of different countries to share, we will have a better chance of going after these criminals. Because if not, 
their wealth and their wealth and their business model has just and of course uh, you're here meeting, you met with the FBI, even the State Department, so you're talking to a lot of your counterparts mm. in the United States and then on to New York to talk to the UN.